good afternoon and uh, i was in fact asking bk when was the last time we had a nobel laureate with us i, I don't know we need to check our archives but it's really a privilege sir thank you so much i had the privilege of meeting uh, professor yunus maybe uh, three years two and a half years back in davos and uh, it was very fascinating the discussions uh, and his spirit and his passion and what he has done and i will i was i've always been inspired by what he's done but to meet him and hear him was uh, truly an amazing experience i'm really privileged that uh, he's come here to visit us in many ways a uh, lot of csr in india started uh, uh, with the way our company was set up and the philosophy of our founders so it's a great occasion for us to have someone who's uh, uh, done so much work in the social sector just across the border and uh, in many ways uh, defined what microcredit is and uh, not just stop there there were so many other innovative things that has been done since there uh, what uh, he talked about when we met two and a half years back was uh, social entrepreneurship and social business uh, there's also a relationship with the tata group uh, so thank you very much without much ado i request uh, professor yunus to share his thoughts and of course uh, we'll have the q and a thank you very much sir Thank you. Thank you very much, Narendran. It's good to see you again. Uh, I'm not visiting, actually. I'm in a pilgrimage. This is a place that uh, <clears throat> inspired me for a long time. The person behind this place uh, who created all this, Jamshilji, uh, he more than 100 years back, what he was, his thinking and what he did actually, it's not just thinking, writing a book, but he did something concrete. Um, this is what I always thought business should be. Uh, kind of business I, concept has been derailed, go in a completely different direction. And when I was visiting the archives and all the um, center of excellence, uh, presentations and see how meticulously he thought about everything that he did in the direction what I was trying to bring it back in my novice way uh, I had um, no idea what the people talk about uh, the kind of thing that I do whether uh, they should be considered of any attention by any uh, business school student, uh, forget about their faculty members. Uh, so seeing this man doing something which probably is the future of business the way I think about it, and coming here to see in, in real terms what this uh, place is all about and the thoughts and the philosophy that went behind it. Uh, I give example of uh, Tata, uh, in my presentations when I talk about social business, I said this is nothing new. It is originated way back, uh, more than 100 years back. person like Tata was saying all these things, doing things like that, without writing, writing a big thesis about it. He did that in a very concrete way. So it's my great pleasure uh, coming here in that pilgrimage and uh, uh, seeing those pieces together and trying to understand what transpired in his mind when he created all this. And my work uh, didn't start that way, in a business way. I'm not a businessman. I never intended to be a businessman. But circumstances has pushed me in the direction which gradually people say, hey, you're a businessman. I didn't realize that I'm a businessman, but I was. That's what the point out. They start pointing out, you're a banker. I didn't realize that I was a banker. But then from outside, I look like a banker. And sometimes, like you did the introduction here, uh, people would introduce me. Uh, here we introduce him, such and such person. He's a banker to the poor. So I, I said, OK, that sounds good. I'm a banker to the poor at least. It gives me a little bit of uh, flexibility. <laughs> I'm not a banker of the type that people will consider me. 
Then I raised a new question along with that. Um, after that introduction, I said, well, if there was a, a banker actually, and speaking in the same stage, from the same stage, how do you introduce him? You'll say, here he is a great banker, very mm, successful banker, very astute banker, whatever the adjective you want to put, you'll say he's a banker, he's a leader of the bankers, and so on. I said, I, I would protest that if you say, it, if you introduce him like that. I would protest because you just introduced me as a banker to the poor. Now you're saying this is a banker. That as if give the impression that he does banking for everybody, and I'm only doing banking for the poor people. I said the legitimate thing would be, if you introduce me as a banker to the poor, you say, here's another one, he's a banker to the rich. Because he doesn't care for the people, poor people. He doesn't reach out to the poor people. So he should be designated as a banker to the rich. As I don't care for the rich people, I don't have anything to do with the rich people, I lend money to the poor people, and you call me banker to the poor. I'm fine with me. I mentioned this because that's where our thinking process goes wrong completely. We call them banks. You know, when we are very small, still struggling to show what we can do, what we are doing. I used to say that they should change the names of all these banks because they should say it's a bank for the rich. That's their, they're not bank in a kind of absolute term that it's anybody is entitled to do business with them. Not true. Not everybody is entitled to do business with them. Only the very privileged people are entitled to do business with them, the rich. So the fact they call them bank, we never thought of another kind of bank. If they call themselves bank for the rich, then it will be an obligation for all of us to think about bank for the poor. But they didn't have any room, leave any room open for us. They called themselves bank. And we said, well, that's the way they go. Maybe they are doing the right thing. All these questions came much later. And I started lending money to the poor people, not because I had a research project, because I'm a university teacher, so the uh, right thing to do for me to start a research project to see why money, the lending cannot be done for the poor people and so on. So that's not how I came to this issue. I came to this issue accidentally, without knowing that I will ever lend money to anybody. That's not my goal, or that's not my um, anything on my picture, that uh, this is what I should do in my life. The whole thing began because of the circumstances that I was in Bangladesh at that time. Uh, some of you may remember the famine of Bangladesh in 1974. Lots of people died in that famine. And right at that moment, I was teaching in the university, in one of the universities in Bangladesh, Chittagong University. And seeing this famine going around, and here I'm teaching elegant theories of economics, I felt very guilty. Guilty because I teach something which has no meaning to the life of the people who are dying. I said, then I wondered what kind of subject economics is if it is not helpful for the people, people who are on the way to death. It has no role to play in it. So why am I teaching this course, which has nothing to do with real life people? So I felt very disgusted and felt that I'm using myself for something useless. So I was looking for some use for me, what should be useful for me. And one way I thought, forget about this economics, this is, has nothing to do with the people anyway. This is a stories, these are just uh, make-believe fairy tales. You draw graphs, you make equations and all kinds of things and draw conclusions for a fairy tale world. Real life is not limit, linked to that. And I thought maybe what I should do, I should go out and meet real people. 
and see if I can be of some use to them. And Chittagong University, where I was teaching, luckily, is located right among villages. It's not urban-based university. It's far away from the urban center among the villages. So it was very easy for me. I can just walk out of the campus, the borderline, and be in the village because it's right in the village and be with the people and feminine-stricken people. So I, every day, this is what I would do. My ambition was, can I find some way to make myself useful to even to one person in some way each day? So that was my objective, and I'll go around in the village, talk to people, sit down with them, trying for an opportunity, finding an opportunity to see if I could do something for somebody helpful, to be helpful to them. So gradually I found a way. Every day I could find something to do. And I felt very happy with that. I felt happy because for the first time I felt that I'm being useful to somebody, even in a small way, but I'm useful. 